Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. That way you lovely people get notified every single time I upload a video. Today's video, we are going to go into part two of chapter six of As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, so let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics of foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Okay. <clears throat> let's get right into it. Pip's shoulders arched and her jaw tensed. Why was he everywhere? Why could she never get away from him? <clears throat> I know, Kara said, reading Pip's face. And obviously I wasn't going to serve him, so I told Jackie I'd clean the milk frother while she dealt with the customers. She took Max's order, and then someone else came in. <clears throat> she paused for dramatic effect. Jason Bell. Oh, really, Robbie said. Yeah, he was standing in line behind Max, and even though I was trying to hide from them, I could see him kind of eyeballing the back of Max's head. Understandably, Pip said, Jason Bell had just as much reason to hate Max Hastings as she did. Whatever the out outcome of the trial, Max had drugged and raped his youngest daughter, Becca, and as horrific and unspeakable as it as that was, it was even worse than that. Max ac Max's actions were the catalyst for Amy Bell's death. You might even say a direct cause. Everything came back to Max Hastings when you really thought about it. Becca traumatized, letting Andy die in front of her and covering it up. Sal Singh dead, believed to be Andy's killer. That poor woman in Elliot Ward's attic. Pip's project, her dog, Barney, buried in the backyard. Howie Bowers in prison, sharing whispers about Child Brunswick. Charlie Green arriving in town. Layla Mead, Jamie Reynolds missing, Stanley Forbes dead, and blood on Pip's hands. She could trace it all back to Max Hastings. The origin her cornerstone, and maybe Jason Bell's too. I mean, yeah, Cara said, but I wasn't expecting the next part, so Jackie, Jackie handed Max his drink, and he was turning to walk away. Jason held out his elbow and nudged right into Max, spilled coffee all down his t-shirt. No, Robbie stared at Cara, I know. Her whispers stand, strained in, into an excitable hiss, and then Max was like, watch what you're doing, and shoved him back. And Jason grabbed Max's collar and said, you stay out of my way, or something like that. But by this point, Jackie had inserted herself between them, and this was the other customers escorted Max out of the cafe, and apparently he was going on about, you'll hear from my lawyer or something. Sounds like Max, Pip said, pushing the words through her gritted teeth. She shivered, the air felt different now, but she knew he'd been here too. Stuffy, cold, tainted. Fearview was just not big enough for both of them. Naomi's been wondering what to do with, about Max. Kara continued, so quiet you couldn't even call it a whisper anymore. Whether she should go to the police, tell them about New Year uh, 2014, you know, the hit and run. Even though she'll get in trouble, she's saying at least it will get Max in trouble too. So he was, as he was the one driving, maybe it's a way of putting him behind bars at least for a short while so he couldn't hurt anyone else and put an end to this ridiculous lawsuit. This, no, Pip cut across her. Naomi can't go to the police. It won't work. She'll only be hurting herself and nothing will happen to him. Max will win again. But at least the truth will be out, and Naomi, the truth doesn't matter, Pip said, digging her nails into her thigh. The Pip from last year wouldn't recognize this one today. The lively-eyed girl in, this, in her school project naively clinging to the truth, wrapping it around herself like a blanket. But the Pip sitting here was a different person, and she knew better. The truth had burned her too many times. It couldn't be trusted. Tell her not to, Kara. She didn't hit the man, and she didn't want to leave him. She was co coerced. Tell her, I promise I will get him. I don't know how, but I will do it. Max will get exactly what he deserves. Robbie stretched out an arm around Pip's shoulder, giving it a gentle squeeze. Or, you know, instead of revenge pots, we could focus our energy on going off to college in a few weeks, he said brightly. You haven't even picked out a new comforter. I'm told that's a very important milestone. Pip knew that Robbie and Cara had just flashed each other a look. I'm fine, she said. Cara looked like she was about to say something more, but her eyes drew up as the bell jingled above the cafe door. Pip turned to follow her gaze. If it was Max Hastings, she didn't know what she might do. She, ah, oh, hello, gang, said a voice Pip knew well. Connor Reynolds, she smiled and waved at him, but it wasn't just Connor. Jamie was here, too, closing the cafe door with another chime of the bell. He spotted Pip a moment later, and the grin split his face, wrinkling his freckled nose, frecklier now after the summer. And he, 
and she should know she'd spent the entire week he was missing, studying photos of his face, searching his eyes for answers. Fancy seeing you guys here, Jamie said, overtaking Connor as he strolled over to their table. He placed a fleeting hand on Pip's shoulder. Hey, how you doing? Can I get you guys a drink or something? Sometimes Pip saw the same look in Jamie's eyes, too, haunted by Stanley's death and the parts they'd both played in it. A burden they would always share, but Jamie had it been there when it happened. He didn't have the blood on his hands, not in the same way. Why is it whenever I'm on shift, the whole freaking circus turns up, Car said. Do you guys think I'm lonely or something? No, mate, Connor flicked her top knot. We think you need practice. Connor Reynolds, I swear to God, if you order one of those iced pumpkin macchiatos today, I will murder you dead. Kara, Jackie called cheerily from behind the counter. Remember, lesson number one, we don't threaten to kill customers, even if they're ordering the most complicated thing just to annoy you. Kara stood up with an exaggerated side eye at Connor. Even then, Kara growled, calling Connor a basic white bitch under her breath as she made her way toward the counter. One iced pumpkin macchiato coming up. She said with the fakest of enthusiasm, made with love, I hope, Connor laughed. Car glowered more like spite. Well, as long as it's not spit. So Jamie said, taking Cara's empty seat, Nat told me about the mediation meeting. Pip nodded. It was eventful. I can't believe he's suing you. Jamie's hand tightened into a fist. It's just, it's not fair. You've been through enough. She shrugged. It'll be fine. I'll work it out. Everything always came back to Max Hastings. He was on every side and every angle pressing in on her, crushing her, filling her head with the sound of Stanley's cracking ribs. She wiped the blood off of her hands and changed the subject. How's paramedic training going? Yeah, it's going well, he nodded, broke into a smile. I'm actually really enjoying it. Who would have thought I would ever enjoy hard work? I think Pip's disgusting work ethic might be contagious, Ravi said. You should sh you should stay back for your own safety. The bell clanged again from the sudden way. Jamie's eyes glowed. Pip knew exactly who had just walked in. Nata Silva stood in the doorway, her silver hair tied up in a small, stubbly ponytail. Through most of her hair made a break from the scrunchie, fanning around her long neck. Nat's face lit up as she surveyed the room, rolling up her sleeves for plaid shirt. Pip! Nat made a beeline straight for her. She went down and wrapped a long arm around Pip's shoulders, hugging her from behind. She smelled like summer. Didn't know you'd be here. How are you? Good, Pip said. Their cheeks pressed together. Nat's skin cold and fresh from the breeze outside. You? Yeah, we're doing good, aren't we? Nat straightened up and walked over to Jamie. He stood up to offer her his chair, pulling out another for himself. They paused as they collided. Nat's hands pressed to his chest. Hey, you, she said, and kissed him quickly. Hey, you, yourself, Jamie said, the color rising to his already red cheeks. Pip couldn't help but smile, watching the two of them together. It was, what was the word? Nice, she supposed? Something pure, something good that no one could take away from her. To have known each of them at their lowest and to see how they, how far they come on their own and together, a part of their lives and a part of hers. Sometimes good things did happen in this town. Pip reminded herself, her gaze catching on Ravi, finding his hand under the table, Jamie's glowing eyes, and Nat's fierce smile, Connor and Cara bickering over pumpkin spice. This was what she wanted, wasn't it? Just this normal life? People you could count on, your fingers who cared about you as much as you cared about them? The people who would look for you as you disappeared? Could she bottle this feeling, live off of it for a while, fill herself with something good and ignore the sick of blood? The slick of blood on her hands, not think about the gun and the sound of the cup hitting the table or those dead eyes waiting for her in the darkness of a blink. Oh, too late. That is the end of chapter six. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.